We are beyond the gates today down in Laguna Beach, and I'm sitting here with Aaron Slattery of the Laguna Beach Chamber of Commerce. And um, first off, I mean, Laguna Beach is a top destination for vacationers for, you know, not only in California, but people from all over the world. Right. What do you think is the number one thing that people come to Laguna Beach for, or is it already in the name? Like, <laughs> the beach, The beach, right. right. Yes, yes. Uh, well, besides the beach, we are known to be an art colony, right. so our summer art festivals are a big draw, including the Pageant of the Masters, right. and that is internationally known. There's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. That's usually the first stop for people who want to come down, so, oh, yes. let's go to the Masters. Exactly. The art, why, why did Laguna Beach become such an art community, and when did it start to thrive like that? Well, you know, very, very early on. Um, I remember the Festival of Art started, uh, gosh, I think it's, they're celebrating 90 years wow. this year. Okay. And it was, the Patch of the Masters started because they were wanting to bring the beachgoers into the canyon where the artists were working. But, so, but the, the artists weren't here, the artists were here first before the, the festival. Just because it's such a beautiful place, yeah, I think. Yeah, you know, yeah. they just wanted to capture the the beauty of the area. And when artists get together, they have that creative energy that they build off of each other. So I think, you know, once we got known as an artist colony, mm -hmm. more and more showed up and wanted to be part of that same creative energy. Which still goes on today. Exactly. Which, yes. which a lot of the, the chamber events, I guess, are um, surround that whole idea of art, correct? Not necessarily. It surrounds our local businesses. So the chamber is an advocate for our small businesses here in Laguna Beach. Um, so nonprofits are, of course, businesses, mm -hmm. and the festivals are nonprofits. So we help support them. But we also support our mom and pop coffee houses, sure. our nail salons, our retail stores, you know, the local dentist. All of those businesses are supported by the chamber. I noticed as I walk in, there's a little sign that says uh, shop small. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we also have our fundraising events to keep our doors and lights on. Sure. <laughs> um, so we have um, the state of the city which is not a fundraiser, but it, uh, it's like the State of the Union for mm -hmm. the city. And so the mayor speaks, the police and the fire department speak, and they let us know what they've accomplished in the past year and what they're planning to accomplish it in the like new year. It is like the State of the Union. Exactly. I know the residents of Laguna Woods Village, a lot of us always come to Laguna Beach to, to have a lot of fun, mm -hmm. but also they, they like to get involved with different things from the village, other volunteer opportunities with the chamber. There are volunteer opportunities with the Chamber, actually. We have a volunteer organization called Our Ambassadors, mm -hmm. and so they help us represent the Chamber to the community. One of the basic uh, volunteer tasks right. is that when an, we get a new member, we want to welcome that new member with a certificate and to find out how the Chamber can help them better. So our ambassadors go out, they interview the new member, and they present them with a certificate and see if they want to have a ribbon cutting. Now, how could somebody from the village get involved with something like that? Just go onto your website, come here? Uh, either way, way, yes. There is a page on the website <laughs> that talks about the ambassador um, a bill, uh, opportunity. Just changing gears, what's mm -hmm. the big attraction to Heisler Park? Um, it's a beautiful, it everybody talked about? huge park that is right on the ocean. So there's weddings there. There's, um, you know, morning yoga. There's lots of different activities that it just want that beautiful background setting, and it's just glorious. Um, we have our uh, Veterans Day celebration. There's memorials. There's statues. Mm -hmm. There's lots of art all along there. Is it right off Main Beach? It is just north of Main Beach, and it is connected via a walking path. Oh, okay. So, yes. Um, there's Main Beach, which has the boardwalk, and then if you continue up the pill, hill... Right, and it overlooks and the Main Beach yes, little space. Okay, because yes. I actually, we, mm -hmm. I think we did a, a show up there as well. Yes, yes. Now I know where you're talking about, because I know we came in here, and people people were talking about the yes. park. So tell me about more of the events that are going on. Yes, so um, some of our fundraising events that help to support the Chamber include our annual golf tournament. Okay. And that is at the Aliso Viejo Golf Club, and that is in May. So save the date for May 22nd. Okay. We'd love to have you come and join us and play some fun golf. Okay. Um, our uh, 
Pageant of the Masters, as right. we mentioned earlier. Sure. Um, the Laguna Beach Chamber actually does a fundraiser for the dress rehearsal of the pageant. So we sell tickets for the dress rehearsal, um, which is the last dress rehearsal right before it opens. Before it opens. Yes. So you get all of the goodies without a tired cast. <laughs> Say that again. All the goodies without the... Without the cast being tired. Oh, tired. Oh, you know, okay. because they're okay. working every night for yeah, the rest yeah. of the summer. So they're still excited and they're and they're ready to show off. And so you get you get every single aspect of the full performance without a tired cast. <laughs> Aaron, thank you very much for your, your time here this morning. And uh, let's see if we can get some people from the village to help with uh, the, was it the ambassador program. The volunteers. Yes, yes it is. Yeah, that should be good. Yes, and um, our ambassadors also help us out at our large fundraising events like the golf tournament and Taste of Laguna and the State of the City. Cool. Thank you. You're very welcome. And now for more from Beyond the Gates, let's go to Susan. I'm here today in Laguna Beach at the Casa Laguna Hotel. Now, I have to say, I feel like I've stepped into a little slice of heaven here. It is just the most charming, spectacular place, and I can't wait to hear more about it. And with us today is Zaman, who is the general manager of the hotel. Zaman, it's just such a treat to have you with us today and to be here in this lovely facility. So. Tell us a little bit about it, um, a little bit. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Thank you for uh, considering us, and we're very honored to be a part of your show. Um, and very thrilled to share the history about Casa Laguna and, mm -hmm. and um, its background and what it's evolved to over the years to what it is now. Uh, yeah, just to go back, uh, was built by uh, Frank Augustine Miller. He was the architect. Um, and his partner, Arthur Benton, was the builder. Hmm. And they together built the, the very famous Mission Inn in Riverside. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, and I was in wow. 1920s. Yeah, beautiful. I was there beautiful. last week. I was all right. Fabulous, oh, nice. yes. Yeah. But they, did they have the Christmas decor oh, and all that it stuff? It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Totally yeah. amazing. Beautiful, yeah. So that Casa Laguna was um, where they used the same materials from building that Mission Inn huh. and built Casa Laguna. Yeah. And so where we're standing right now today, it's, uh, we're in the Mission House lobby. This is part was initially built as a residence. Um, the main yeah. house was down at Victoria Beach, and this huh. was the back house. Um, before Pacific Coast Highway was much of a road back then, it was oh. a small Lord Dirt Road. And yes, yeah, oh, so this was this was that. That this was yeah. it. Old Laguna Beach, yeah. where it had the real old old highway along there. Right. People in their old cars from the 1920s, 1930s. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt here. Oh no, yeah, it's, it's a lot of great history. And yes, yeah, so you built that. Uh, they built they built they used the same materials from building that mission in I see. and built that house down at Victoria Beach. And also, that's still standing there today is the famous Pirates Tower. Oh, um, that's near us here. Exactly. It's directly across from us. Exactly. So anybody can go and visit it. Um, yeah, definitely. Really? A lot of people go down there and do beautiful photos. Okay. We're on Sunset Time. Good to know. Yeah, yeah. It's about a 10-minute walk from here, okay. from the hotel. And initially, that when he built that tower, uh, it was a gift to his wife. It was called, referred to as the Mermaid Tower to oh. his wife, Mariona. Mm -hmm. And when they later on sold that property and they gifted that Tower to the city, of course, and it was now referred to as the Pirate uh, Tower. Oh, right. um, I didn't realize all that. Right. So this yeah. all happened in the 1920s. Right. Yeah. All right, and then since then, yeah. um, it, it's it's evolved over the years. Right. And so now it's well, I think just the location itself. It's mm -hmm. built on this very steep hill. Right. And you have how many rooms? So we have uh, 23 rooms here. Okay. And all of our rooms accommodate two adults. All right. uh, so all of our rooms accommodate two people. Essentially, we're more of a Casa Laguna is great for a couple's getaway adult hotel environment. And, you know, due to the art and the culture and the accommodations, it's um, it's perfect for a relaxing, you know, Oh, getaway. it absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. And I can see how you it would attract not only visitors from out of town, but I think local people. What a perfect getaway to Definitely. check in here for a weekend or a couple of days yeah. right across from the beach and the beautiful views and the gardens and everything about it is spectacular. 
Thank you. So yeah. over the years, it's evolved. The rooms have been added on. Yeah. And so now it's the 23 rooms, and you have parking in the back? Correct. Yeah, we do have complimentary parking. Um, we do have a lovely heated pool that's heated at 82 yeah. all year round. Beautiful. Uh, we offer a great spa services here. We have a very talented spa therapist team. And yeah, we have a, a delicious complimentary breakfast that we offer to our hotel guests. Right. Um, we also have a, a great um, Mediterranean slash Spanish menu that's inspired oh, nice. uh, for lunch, and that's available from 12 p.m. to 7:30 p.m. Now, daily. is that open for just your the the residents, the occupants, the guests here? Correct. It's yes. open. Okay. It's, it's for hotel guests only. Hotel yeah, guests yeah. only. Just, we wanted the place to keep it secluded and quiet. Uh -huh. um, so it's available for hotel guests, but our spa services are available for uh, non-registered guests. All right, but, good. Um, and I thought it was interesting to note that right nearby is the Drake, yes. which is a, uh, I'm not sure how to describe it, it's only been open for, what, a year? Mm -hmm. And it's a jazz club, a restaurant, it's open seven days a week. Mm -hmm. It's a hot place to come and visit. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. it's about a 10 minute walk from here. Yeah. Uh, they have a great steak and seafood options. And they have the beautifully um, redesigned uh, restaurant. And uh, we definitely recommend our guests to, to take a night. It's a short walk to, to the right. Drake. Yeah, and they also awesome. have, what is the pizza place that's right nearby? Very unique. Um, yeah, so uh, the, this is as is. It's uh -huh. a close by option. It's a California cuisine restaurant. And, and they have great pizza and also some Italian options as well. But, uh, but yeah, that's uh, been here for, I think it's family owned. It's been here since the 60s. Uh, so it's locals favorite, definitely. Uh, it's another place we, we definitely recommend. And just an easy walk to the beach from mm -hmm. here too, which is a, uh, this is right next to that underpass I was mentioning earlier. Okay, uh, so the yeah. people, okay, we're on, um, we're on the, the, the east side of Pacific Coast Highway overlooking the beach, but we're not right on the beach. Correct. So they walk down 10 minutes, go under the underpass. Exactly. And then yes. they're at, what beach is it? Um, so it's called Victoria Beach. All right. Um, yeah, so we're about exactly two blocks south of the hotel. And there's an underpass that goes underneath PCAs and then takes goes through a tunnel, then it takes them down to the sand. Now, is that a public beach or is it just for uh, guests at the It's hotel? a public beach, yeah. All right. Yeah, what you. a wonderful little find. Um, other things uh, I can ask you about, let me look here for a minute. Oh, if people wanted to go to explore other parts of Laguna Beach um, and not use their car, <clears throat> Is there a, a, a trolley that stops, or a bus, or yeah. Uber's location, or how would they get around? Definitely, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, the city of Laguna Beach has a Laguna Beach uh, trolley service right. and operates daily. On the weekends, the hours, uh, they go to like 10 p.m., um, and it comes pretty frequently. It comes about every 20 to 30 minutes oh. on the hour. And is yeah. that year-round? All year-round, yep. Oh, and and uh, there's a shuttle stop right in front of the hotel. So yeah, as soon as you exit the hotel, you'll see the trolley stop on the left-hand side. Yeah, that's a great way to travel around Laguna Beach. Uh, that's why we definitely always recommend that to our right. guests. How far uh, north does the trolley co go? I've forgotten. Yeah, it goes to... Uh, uh, it goes past Heisler Park, goes to Crescent oh. Bay Park, okay. and then it turns around and then goes back All to the right. downtown area. And it makes a detour up by the um, uh, the Pageant of the Masters and all that? Right. Okay. Uh, first impression of this hotel, when you drive by it, it is it looks like it's very small, right. when actually it's terraced up quite a ways on the hill. I think there are about three different terraces people can walk up, each right. one beautifully, beautiful gardens, yeah. swimming pool, Sauna as you walk your uh, your way up to the to the top, fabulous views of course, and there are um, well now there's one very tell us about the rooms a little bit because there's one that's very large, mm -hmm. and tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, so that's uh, I think you referred to as the cottage, yes. and it's a lovely room. It's our most spacious, accommodating yeah. suite. It's about 650 square feet. Yeah. Um, has a separate room from the living room area. It's got a private. Um, balcony, private uh, bat, uh, patio area. Um, also has a jetted claw tub with, with a separate oh, enclosed glass shower. That uh, bathroom was spectacular. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, all of our, the entire property went under renovation when it changed ownership in 2014. And um, they did a, a an amazing job with the remodel. It was redesigned by a famous um, designer. His name is Maren Lawrence Ballard. Huh. And he, you know, the goal was to to 
really keep the cost of the Guna's history and, and, and have it match with right. the with these new white and beautiful uh, Moroccan tiles. Oh, and I think they did, they did a phenomenal job on, on, on these updates. Now, aside from the spectacular cottage, what yeah. about the other rooms? Yeah, of course, uh, we have six different room types. Yeah. Um, we'll start with our uh, with our most uh, economical room rates, uh, we have our garden view rooms. They open up to our beautiful courtyard grounds. Mm. Um, they're about 200 square feet. Again, they open up to a very lush garden area. Great place to go outside and enjoy the environment and read a book if you, if you like. And from there, we have our uh, deluxe ocean view rooms, which offer a view of the ocean, of course. Mm. And they're also about the same size, about 200 square feet as well. And from the next room type from there, we have our junior suite, which are a little bit larger than those room, t mm -hmm. uh, room types. They're about 350 square feet. And then we have one more category of rooms called the one bedroom suite, which is mm. even larger than the junior suites. Um, they're, they offer a separate room from the living room area. So we I have see. you know, different room types based on what they're looking for as far as a view or a garden view. And uh, they're all, all of our rooms have been uh, redesigned and updated oh, since and 2016. Oh, each one, yes, the little tour we took, each one looks very different, has its own personality yeah. and has something really unique to offer. My understanding is that uh, the Casa Laguna is part of a larger group of hotels, uh, small boutique hotels, is that right? That is correct. Scattered yes. around in Southern California? Yeah, all California-based right. um, hotels. Yeah, it's owned and operated by um, PRG Hospitality Group. Oh. They're a small hospitality group based in Los Angeles, and they own yeah, eight luxury boutique hotels. Uh, they have three in Palm Springs area, mm. and then three in the Central Coast as well, which is a beautiful... Oh, right. oh uh, and you would mention Cambria. Cambria exactly, in San Luis Obispo, and huh. one in downtown Los Angeles as well. Huh. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Um, one thing that really strikes me about this place is, is that it has such an artistic history to it, yeah. uh, which fits in so beautifully with the, the artist background in Laguna Beach, which we are quite aware of, you know, going back to the late 1800s. And, right. and um, Laguna Beach is just built on all of that history. And this is so unique. I mean, we are uh, up the road from the montage, but what you have here is like a little jewel that really captures the history of all of Laguna Beach. On this hill, the spectacular views, the beautiful gardens, everything. And it is just a pleasure being here. And I hope our viewers will come and take advantage of this. Thank you. We would love to host them. And thank you again for, um, for considering us. It's an honor to be a part of thank the show. You. Thank and, you. And uh, we would we'd love to host your guests and... Your viewer will take good care of them here. <laughs> I'm uh, sure you would. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bill, you can't beat this place, so what are you up to now? We are beyond the gates this morning with owner John Secretan of Zinc. And it's Zinc, depending upon location, market, cafe. Zinc, Zinc is our brand name, and then below is Zinc Cafe and Market, or Zinc Cafe Market and Bar. Depending upon location. Depending upon our location and our licensing ability. Now, you said in your, your mission statement you, you create a sense of place. Can you explain that a little bit more? Um, starting this business, my, my degree is landscape architecture, so I was very involved in trying to understand how to create outdoor experiences and places. And then when I got also an interest in food, I realized that restaurants and cafes, that is what a restaurant's about, is creating a place for people to congregate and to just have a place to be besides their home. And so Zinc Cafe in Laguna Beach has very much become that over the 35 years. Which this is your original location. Yes, this is the original location, opened in 1988. And um, the whole idea was to create this um, European sort of experience. Which you have. Of sidewalk cafes. Now, was your background, you said your background was landscaping? Yeah, my Abby? degree is landscape architecture, which I think feeds really easily into the restaurant business. It in does. fact, I think if you find there are a lot of restaurant owners that are either frustrated architects or architects that are frustrated uh, des desiring the ability to have a restaurant because they, they are very expressive of so many design aspects of what you try to achieve in a design. 
And typically, architecture is always trying to achieve a place for people to enjoy, for the most part. And a restaurant, that's all you're trying to do, is right. trying to capture that, that magic that makes that happen. And Zinc in Laguna has done that over the 35 years we've been here. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Zinc is... It's a metallic element. It is. This is, this is zinc. This is the zinc. tabletop that we are looking at, if you can see it, is zinc. And it came from Europe, in France particularly, during the war, World War II, I believe, where all of the cafes, or a lot of the cafes, used copper for their sinks and their countertops. Mm -hmm. And then that material became very valuable because it was needed for the war, for ammunition. And so overnight, all these caf cafes either sold or the material was confiscated. And then the next cheapest material to use was zinc. Zinc. So overnight, all these cafes became known as zinc bars. So in Paris, you'll find okay. a lot of, there's Le Petit Zinc, which is the small little cafe. And so when people would say, let's go to the zinc, it was synony synonymous with saying, let's go to the cafe. Mm. So here in Laguna Beach, you have the cafe and you have the market. What is the market? Can somebody come in and get ingredients? To yeah, so the market like evolved because the building next to the cafe became available and I didn't want someone else to go in. Sure. So I leased it not knowing what I could do. The cafe said, no, you don't have enough parking, so you can't, you can't, op you can't expand your restaurant. Um, but market requirements have much less parking requirements and therefore we called it a market and so that's how the market aspect <laughs> came in and then we created all of these salads all of these sort of more cafe or cafeteria kind of items uh, being able to come in and get pounds of salads order <laughs> catering events um, do all that kind of stuff so you can you can do catering yes. and different yes um, if somebody wanted to say come down from the village and take out how would they do that? Uh, you just walk in and anything we have is available to take out or for here. You have a website? That and we have a website that you can go to, zincafe.com. Okay. And on there are um, the restaurant ordering guides, the catering ordering guides, the event ordering guides. So you okay. can also hold events at all That's of our locations simple. as well. Yeah. What hours are you open here in Laguna Beach? Uh, Laguna is 7 to 4 p.m. And in the summers, we do dinners, um, but that's only during the festival times. Mm -hmm. um, and all the locations vary a little bit depending on the neighborhood. Sure. Yeah. Here in Laguna Beach, what do you think is the most popular dish thing oh, man. people order, or is it tough? It's, <laughs> it is very, it's, okay. it, it's impossible. I would say um, what they like is the easy accessibility of being able to come in and get a full meal. And or you can come in and just kind of get a little bite of salad, you know, a small plate sure. that costs you six dollars uh, versus you know spending twenty bucks on a full plate. And our price point is very affordable too. I noticed you know, that. Just we're not inexpensive, menu. but we're not expensive. And you can kind of gauge it to whatever you want it to be. You can sit here all day for with a cup of coffee, or you can sit here with a muffin and a cup of coffee, or you can have breakfast and you can stay here and then you can go to lunch and then you can stay here and then you can take dinner home. <laughs> I, w I will say that the, the, the zinc tabletop makes it great for writing. So if you want to sit here and <laughs> yeah. write and have a cup of coffee. If you have a pen and paper. Yes. Most people have a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can press the write on it. Okay. Now we talked about your menu. Do you have anything that uh, tilts to a vegan type of well, one thing that I think, um, I'm a third generation vegetarian, both sides of the family. So the restaurant is vegetarian, uh, but it has never been sort of done on a trendy basis. It's mm -hmm. done on just really normal food because trendy didn't exist when my mom and my grandmother right. were eating. <laughs> they just That's ate true. all the regular foods, just minus the meat. Yeah. So we have macaroni and cheese, we have spinach lasagna, we have pizzas, we have great salads. Are you making me hungry? We have all these things that, um, we have customers that come in not knowing we're a vegetarian restaurant and have been here for a year. Then all of a sudden they decide they want a tuna fish sandwich and we look at them like they're crazy <laughs> and it's like they had no idea we were vegetarian. Is there a difference between vegan and vegetarian? Yeah, I think uh, everybody's a little confused in this day yeah. and age with vegan and vegetarian. They tend to uh, combine the words and there's a big difference between vegetarian and vegan. Vegan means you're not eating cheese or dairy. But you have. But we we use cheese and, and, all, mm -hmm. and eggs in all of our products. So it makes the menu much more varied and much more appealing to the meat eater the meat. who wants protein and wants things that they normally can't well, find for in a vegan diet. An egg? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not a vegan. No. Right. <laughs> a vegan does not. All right. That's true. So, uh, so 
the the words are are used synonymously now, whereas before there were distinct differences between the two. And now when you're a vegetarian restaurant, they also expect you to be vegan. So for those vegans, we do have a huge option and choices for them. So we are primarily a vegetarian restaurant, but, but please don't hesitate to come in if you're vegan because sure. we do have options for you. Now, this was the original location of Zinc. Did you grow up in this area? I grew up in Tustin, uh, just 20 okay. minutes 20, 20 minutes inland. And then um, I went to school in Berkeley and lived up in the Bay Area for 10 years with school and afterwards. And um, in, in doing this, the restaurant business, I didn't have the confidence to compete with the sort of San Francisco elite uh, food okay. experiences going on up there and I was ready to make a move. So knowing what I knew from there and knowing that, that it was very unsophisticated at the time in Orange County of yeah. the whole food movement, I thought I could come down here and make a lot of mistakes and nobody would know. And, no one knows. <laughs> and I did make a lot of mistakes and uh, we have corrected them since. Sure. But it was, a, it was a much more forgiving place. Was it the art community sense or vibe at all? How well, and, and then coming from Berkeley where it is more of a university town um, and it's, it's a little bit more hip and a little bit more experimental, I thought in all of Orange County, what mimics that the best? And Laguna Beach sort of mimicked that with yeah. having UCI nearby. A lot of professors live here in mm -hmm. Laguna. Students were used to live here when it was a little more affordable. Um, and so Laguna just has the, it has the residences, it has the uh, tourism, and it Very has the charm yeah. of a great spot to, to have a restaurant. Which is, this is, this is a really great spot. It's yeah. Very comforting. It's a sense of place. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. John, thank you very much for your time here. I know, again, running a, a restaurant is, is very time-consuming, and we appreciate your time here. Well, I appreciate the interest you guys have at Zinc, and I wish everybody comes down to visit us. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. All right, thank you. Sure.